It's a fabulous day to come and to worship the Lord here at Cedardale Church. We have had just such a wonderful time worshiping the Lord and spending time with the family of God this week. Our scripture reading this morning is found on page 694 in your pew Bible. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 13 and 14. Then some children were brought to him so that he might lay his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, let the children alone. Do not hinder them from coming to me, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. We've had a great time, as I said earlier, with the children. We've just finished Mums and Tots. We've already been to Rickson Manor with our, our Kids Club kids. We've had Sunday school this morning, which is also called Kids Club as well. It's a great time to just welcome the children because Jesus loves them as much as you. Well, greetings to you today, another Sunday morning, and I'm happy just to share with you for a few moments. The word of the Lord from Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Let me read those words to you for just a few moments. The word of the Lord. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance that the Lord will bring to you today. Hear that again. Moses answered the people. So obviously they needed a response. We'll get to that in a moment. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance that the Lord will bring to you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. For the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And then in the next verse, the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. So here we might have a bit of a paradox between standing still and moving on. Both commands given in the space of a few short words. There is a difference, of course, in, in what this means. They, they are being admonished to move on from their complaining and to move on from all that they were saying. They were defending a position that made the argument we were better off uh, in our secure place. Even though we were in captivity, we were better off in our secure place back in Egypt you know, are there no graves there for us to be buried in? Why did you bring us out into the desert? So sometimes in order to stop, you actually do have to move on. And that thought is the thought I want to share with you today. Being able to stop and see the salvation of the Lord requires a certain moving on from the bondage and the binding that we so often experience in life today. <clears throat> the command that Moses gave to the children of Israel because he received it from God himself is in this 14th chapter and it's a command to just stop and watch what God is doing. But in the 13th chapter, there are instructions that have been given for Moses to pass on to the children of Israel. Consecrate every firstborn male to me, says God, the first offspring of every womb among the Israelites, listen to this, belongs to me, whether man or animal. And so there were a number of things that accompanied that instruction. They had to do certain things in order to consecrate those firstborn. 
they had to commemorate the day until this very day. There was clear instructions that were given. So chapter 3, or chapter 13, I'm sorry, is all about doing, but chapter 14 is all about being. <clears throat> I wonder what chapter we are living in today. I wonder what chapter the church is in today. It seems to me the chapter that the church might be in and that we as individuals within her might be in is chapter 13, where we're doing. We're doing a lot. We're, we're, we're doing everything possible. We're, we're, we're doing this. We're, we're doing that. Our schedules are full to the brim of things that we are doing. Take a look at your church event schedule pre-COVID and maybe now even post-COVID and just see how much activity is involved in that. Now, I know that there is an argument to be made about keeping people busy in the Lord. But busyness in the work of the kingdom does not always produce results and does not always produce fruit. There's never been a time in the history of the church when we've had so much access to so much expertise. Seminars and workshops and events and conferences and all of the things that tend to move us perhaps from what the original intent was to something much different, Richard Rohr, who as a Franciscan priest makes this commentary. He said that in the early days of the church, back in Israel and Palestine, that the disciples offered an experience. When it moved to Greece and to the eastern parts of the Mediterranean, the disciples offered a philosophy. When it moved to Europe and perhaps even the first world in the United Kingdom, then the disciples offered an organization. And when it moved to North America, hmm, the disciples offered a business. Now I'm not subscribing 100% to Richard Rohr's commentary on the evolution or devolution of the church. But I am saying this, that we do need to be sure that we are offering an experience, whatever we're doing, whatever time we're worshiping, how often we worship, the programs of the church, all of those things will keep us in bondage and all of a sudden we will be tied to what we have historically been doing and moving out of that to insert into our calendars and into our lives and into our daily experiences, the still moments, the moments where we just stop, where we, we just say, all right, enough already. Let me just stop and let me have a day or two in the presence of the Lord, just like those early disciples when they emerged from the waters of the River Jordan said goodbye to John the Baptist and followed Jesus. The Bible tells us that they spent the day with Jesus. So back to our story for a moment. Here we have the children of Israel. They were terrified. They were crying out to the Lord. They were complaining to Moses. And then we have the miracle. You see, Pharaoh had made a decision to let the children of Israel go. But when he saw that they actually took him up on his offer, he changed his mind and he sent his armies to confront them. And when the children of Israel looked up from where they were and they saw the army coming after them, they were terrified. Now here was the moment when they transitioned from doing to being. 
And the word of God comes and says, stand still. See the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. Easier said than done. But I do believe we have come to the place in our history where we need to stop and we need to be being people more than doing people, stopping and standing still and watching God deliver us. We have become self-made people and we have rewritten the terms of salvation in becoming those self-made people. We have reinterpreted the terms of what it means to actually be a Christian, to turn your back on sin. Oh God, forbid the use of that word, but to turn our back on sin and to walk in the ways of holiness and righteousness, that has, that's being rewritten before our very eyes because we're doing, we're doing theology and we're doing all of the things that we have been conditioned to become instead of being. An Irishman visited his uncle in New York City and his uncle went to work and Flanagan decided to explore Manhattan. And when he did, he got lost. And he called his uncle, he said, can you come and get me? And his uncle said, well, where are you? He said, well, looking up at the sign, I'm at the corner of walk and don't walk. Well, it's funny, isn't it? But that's where a lot of us spend our time these days, just not knowing what to do. We're at the corner of walk and don't walk. If we're not in Heartbreak Hotel or we're not on Lonely Street, we are on the corner of confusion. And I say to you today, just stop. Stop for a while, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And he will accomplish wonderful things for you to do. The songwriter says, stay still in the hands of the potter. Lie low neath his wonderful touch. He shapeth and moldeth in mercy the clay that he loveth so much. Stay still. Stay still. He is silently planning for thee. Stay still. Stay still. He plans for eternity. God bless. We'll see you again soon.